By now, most of you will already agree with me. A planned protest is already a failed protest. A planned protest is already a failed protest. Any protest that requires organizers. Any protest that requires people to tell me and you the reason why we should protest. It's already failed. Has already failed. Dead on arrival. Any protest that will tell me I am hungry. I am not being paid well. Eh? For me to realize and be oppressed to protest. It's already failing. Has already failed. A planned protest is a failed protest. That's why when they started this talk about protest, I said, hey, when they talk about protest, <laughs> that protest will not, oh. Now, we have so many talk. Now, everybody is just talking and talking and talking and talking. This, that, this, that, this, that. This, that, and that. Of course, you guys are seeing the news now. The crazy part is, people on the internet don't even send. Just go and check about just go and check the videos on protest. They don't get too much views. Nobody said. Honestly, nobody said. Go and check it out. They are not hungry enough. They are not hungry enough. Speak to the people of Nigeria. You are crying is right. Your complaint of hardship is right. But is the solution found in carrying placards and lining the streets? Is the solution found in copying a country lesser than us? The references that are made today to Kenya and all the rest of them, they are smaller countries to Nigeria. We are giant of Africa. We must prefer solution that is better and sustainable and lasting. That solution is not found in our children being killed on the streets while protesting. It's not found in our raising placard. It's found in supporting the policies of government and understanding that these policies need time to begin to materialize. Moving that we amend that prayer to include that members sacrifice uh, maybe 50% of our salary for a period of three months or six months to help Nigerians and to show that we are in support. I, I want to appeal to those that are instigating this protest because I believe there are people behind this protest. It's not that people are just doing it by themselves. And I think DSS has a... Has a has to work, must work hard to find if they can lay, at least be able to scout and get those people that are instigating or the leaders of these protests so that they can dialogue, we can dialogue with them. Let's talk to them. There is no any meaningful achievement in any world without peaceful coexistence. And Mr. Speaker, we know that the hunger is so, so very much that we just have to do something about it. We cannot tell them not to come and protest when we don't tell them what we intend to do. We have to have a program. We have to tell them that really Nigeria or country is going to do something about this. Today I saw Mr. Speak, I must have pressed. Well, guys, uh, DSS, you know, if you are calling DSS into anything, eh, it's already oppression. It's already arrest them. So how can you oppress them and also dialogue with them? I was thinking the House of Rep will op will invite them openly. Send an open invitation. Do your investigation yourself. You can say, okay, DSS, please help us to get the names. We are going to do the invitation ourselves. You cannot oppress then dialogue. If you oppress me, to dialogue with me, how do you want me to speak my mind? I'm going to speak exactly what you tell me to speak. I'm going to say, okay, when you talk, say, yes, ma, yes, ma, yes, ma, because I want you to let me go. You cannot arrest and dialogue now. You cannot call DSS in the matter. Why do you always think you have to use force on everybody? Abba! Why DSS even enter that matter? 
you could have just easily say, are we the house of rep? Are, we have, we are opening an open invita uh, invitation to anyone who feel agitated to come and let us give you the programs that we are doing to remove Nigeria out of this system. But I've said it before, any protest that is planned is already a failed protest. <laughs> People, organizers and everything. <laughs> and Sars uh, taught me useless. I've said it before. A lot of people during NSAS uh, make a lot of money. Yes, so few people were protesting, made a lot of money. Why others were just protesting? Where then they now? Some of them don't travel out. Some of them don't get money to travel out during that time. Some of them don't get fame. Don't monetize their whole social media account, which is okay though. I'm not discriminating that. But I'm just saying. A poor man need anybody to tell and say poor. Ah, ah. Person made the hungry need anybody to tell and say the hungry. Well, I don't know the people who are organizing this protest or who is the organizer, but uh, what I know is that a planned protest is already a failed protest. You see, are why youth don't back out. <laughs> Man, it's crazy, man, in Nigeria. People on social media, the obvious truth is that they don't even care. Let's be honest, you don't care. If someone is speaking the truth, they'll see other person is, uh, what are you talking about? You people do not care. You people do not know even know if they're hungry. People do not know. Well, let's listen uh, to the honorable guy here, Shiukuti. We young people want to protest again, right? The last one I want to talk for this life. Shame on Nigerian workers. I repeat, our papa, these fathers, we, the fathers and mothers, shame on all of you. Shame on all the civil servants. How many times we, the children of this country, are protesting, fighting answers. Now the children are still organizing again to go and protest on the streets to lay their life. About women protested, right? Enugu coal miners protested. Abel Kota women protested. Right? Nothing really changed, but it was the beginning of something. Those protests, what did they really do? They inspired the civil service, the working class. The Nigerian Labor Union was founded under Mike Imodu, the late Pa Mike Imodu, based on the energies of this protest, seeing that their people cannot survive. They used to call it in cola that time cost of living allowance that was the beginning with these workers can take join their people to increase the cost uh, to re uh, increase the cost of living allowance that was the beginning of the struggle against uh, colonialism pai modu used that to show solidarity with the uh, uh, coal miners with the aba women with the abekuta women the professionals of nigeria went on a general strike without that general strike there's no way our protests can make sense because the general strike is what affects the capitalist in the place he respects the most in his pocket but the workers of nigeria the parents of these children are the worst enemies of their own children because regardless of what we are doing in this country to say make this country move forward these people will still go to work now they will blame the protesters Nigeria needs a general strike for at least one month. Nigeria needs one month of general strike. Shut everything down. Make this government hear what? Make these elites hear what? Make them face everybody. Make we negotiate they happen for here. No matter how we protest, as long as there's no general strike, where the money is still being made in their pockets, their children are still flying up and down, all these their business are still opening, giving them all the they're not gonna send. When will the workers of Nigeria align with the people? When I go call protest for fuel, small small things. When we say no, this no 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 no. That says don't Let me say they no go fix the pro, the fuel matter. Or they say we last one a minimum wage. They say they protest. Government never fix minimum wage. They don't call off protest strike. They don't call strike off. Why strike in the first place? Why strike? Fake strike. 
Strive to negotiate money in your own personal pocket. Well, uh, I totally agree with uh, Sheikuti. Totally, totally agree with Sheikuti. But uh, we are in the system where everybody just wants soft landing for themselves. They will still come out to give excuses, like the labor chairman. You will hear the excuses may give now. You understand? Well, I will hear them. But it's quite unfortunate. Now, like so, we just find ourselves. Hmm? <laughs> Oh boy, Naija, my country, Naija, my country, Naija, my country, Naija, my country, guys. Ah. One of the major reasons we make Nigerian Labour Congress can't accept 70,000 minimum wage. We say they have, they tell us, say, if they increase, give us the thing where would they look for? Maybe 250,000. They want to increase the price within the same petrol. And we know, say, if they increase the price within the same petrol, the thing will cause suffering for Nigerian people. And that's labor. We don't want to make Nigerian people suffer more because of the increase in pump price of petroleum. And make, we say, make we day where we day. You know, make other Nigerians not suffer. And I, even if in increase them now, you know, fuel price. Even the 250 will one give us, you know, going to make meaning at all again. One thing at a time. This one now, we will talk minimum wage. You see how we tell and say, no bring fuel matter, put them. When we finish minimum wage, the one will be like for electricity tariff. Since that time, they don't secretly add something again for them. Now, we don't do them later. We will face that one. You know, now so things they be. We know we we'll carry so many things put for head at the same time. The, we don't go national. Why would even slow down small? We say we we'll go Senate with House of Rep, where they call us. We we'll tell them, say, we'll a day day after that, our uh, protest. They can't tell us, say, they, they don't write neck to withdraw the thing. Up to now, Senate never talk. So anytime we will come out again, nobody will blame us because we don't get enough. Uh, patient. How will one make say government go pay this money? Well, guys, uh, you guys hear your leaders correctly. You hear you heard from a uh, Shokuti, heard from a uh, Labour Congress, and Shokuti was right. Majorly, our problem are our mothers, our fathers, they are our parents, still going to work and everything. You know, it's quite unfortunate we are living in the system where you don't actually every Nigeria you get double mind. Yeah, every Nigeria human being living in Nigeria, you get close to four double mind, four minds, four, four. No clear vision that align with others. No clear vision that align with others. That's why I said in the country we have so many kings, so many political affiliation. So many queens, so many local government jammers, so many, 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 many things. The vision will never align. But just how it is, guys. And uh, let me know exactly how you feel about what they said. Shokuti, the House of Rep, and Labour Congress. And of course, what do you think about the planned protest? <laughs>